the key idea of CADA for assurance website and the CADA for assurance uh, webinar is trying to bridge from the uh, advanced research topic and CADA for uh, assurance tools. So we are all researchers. We know that to make a, a mature tool is sometimes even more difficult than developing the methodology itself. But in the meantime, our research is highly benefit from other people's released tool. In fact, software domain has done a perfect job for us. Many of the very mature software tools are open source tools are maintained by the community. But in the hardware domain, we are missing that piece. We have already have a lot of very mature EDA tool from, we call it these commercial tools. So this is something that it's harder to compete. We know that there are already something called uh, uh, open source EDA tool available. So this is a totally another topic. But in this topic, we are asking the question is, what is the CAD tool for security, for assurance, for the supply chain assurance and the protection. So this is largely missing from existing commercial EDA tools. For that reason that we invited top researchers who have already released some tool in our CAD for Assurance website. We invited them not to introduce in you the background, the algorithm, the tool why we do this research, what's the motivation. We assume that every one of you who attended the meeting already been motivated. But the goal of this webinar is trying to introduce you how to using this tool from the tool developers perspective. So they would do the demo. So that's making this kind of assurance unique events is that we are focusing on the tool, on the demo so that you Quickly, you can download the tool from the Cat of Assurance website and you can play with these tools and you can talk to the authors of this tool directly if you have any question or any technical issues like why tool cannot compile, something like that. So with that said, I would like to introduce in today's two speakers or two sets of speakers. Uh, this, uh, Today's webinar uh, are both focusing on a very hot topic called the logic obfuscation and the logic locking. And we would like to understand the security level of these techniques. So both uh, presentations would introducing some new attacks, either the RTL logic attack all the MS, uh, SMT attacks. So we are not promoting this attack method. We are promoting the security analysis, leveraging this attack method, because we needed to understand the limitation of our, our method, our defense in order to improve our defense. So the first talk will be provided by uh, Dr. Chandra Kafar and uh, his students Ramanuj uh, Chokesi, so I hope my pronunciation is correct. The second talk uh, will be presented by Professor Avesta uh, Sassen and uh, his two students, uh, Hadi uh, Madani Kamili and uh, Kimia Zamiri Azar. Okay, so bear with me my uh, pronunciation of all these uh, names. So in the meantime, if you have any question, please use the chat window or the Q&A window. Uh, the talk, each presentation is 30 minutes and there is 10 minutes after each talk uh, for the Q&A. I will be reading these uh, 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 questions. You can just raise your hand. Okay. Uh, the whole uh, uh, session is recorded and it will be released on the uh, IEEE CEDA uh, a YouTube uh, link uh, uh, channel. In fact, uh, last month, we have the 
uh, net list analysis tool set and uh, some other uh, tools like FEDS, Safari, XFC. This talk is already released online. So if you missed this talk or you would like to, to introduce this talk to your colleagues, friends, uh, please uh, check the web link. In fact, Amanda, when I, while I'm talking, Amanda already released the uh, YouTube link uh, on the chat window. Okay. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank a few uh, uh, in institute. It's U uh, University of Florida, uh, Warren B. Nelms Institute for the Connected World, uh, IEEE uh, CEDA, IEEE Hardware Security and Trust uh, Technical Committee. And we also have uh, industrial sponsor from uh, Alien and uh, from uh, Mercury. We uh, appreciate all their support. Uh, Chandra, so the, stadium, the podium is yours. Thank you, uh, Professor Yert. So let me share my screen. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, I must thank uh, this uh, this initiative by Professor uh, Professor Professor Sarul Bhunya and Professor uh, Jean and others. So it's a very important step for. Uh, this activity or uh, progress of this research in this domain. I, I mean, I really appreciate the effort. And also I thank them for inviting me for this webinar. So I am uh, Dr. Chandan Karfa. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Guwahati. I do work on formal verification, high-level synthesis, hardware security, and verification compatible optimization. And uh, uh, so in this particular work, uh, this tool come out from uh, primarily Ramanuj and myself work on this uh, uh, RTL attack. And uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is for first 10 minutes or so, I'm going to introduce the idea. And then I'll request my student Ramanuj uh, who uh, to present the demo of the tool. Hope that will uh, solve the purpose. So. Uh, so this work was a joint effort with uh, myself, Ramanuj, and with uh, my uh, collaborator, uh, Christian from uh, uh, Polytechnic de Milano, uh, Siddharth and Ramesh from uh, NIU, US. Uh, so, uh, so this is the same slide that I've used in the date conference paper, but I'm not going to go into detail of all the topics because uh, the purpose of this uh, webinar is different, right? So uh, just to introduce uh, the idea is, uh, this because of this fabulous uh, de development of these ICs, there are a lot of uh, problem with IP piracy and overbuilding, right? So this is very, very much well known that if your IP go to third party, uh, this uh, fabrication house, and there may be some malicious entity there who can actually uh, steal the IP and can overproduce or uh, I mean, other, other stuff can be done. And to rescue this, uh, the solution that is very well accepted is logic locking. The idea is very much uh, very simple that in, in your circuit you add additional keys so that your circuit uh, and then you give this whole layout to the uh, fabrication house without and but you don't give the keys to them right so the key is with the authentic user only so as a result this uh, so even if he has the layout if he reverse engineer whatever he does without the key he's not able to uh, access the actual i mean he cannot use the ip Right. So that was the uh, the basic idea, and then uh, in the last uh, with the advent of logic locking in around 2008, there are a lot of work happening in this particular domain, and which is very exciting. And there are very significant work. One of the work in this domain is the SAT attack by late Pramod, uh, my friend late Pramod Mal Subramaniam, which is something uh, was most of the one of the most significant work in this logic locking domain, where he basically proposed and set this attack, which break all the uh, uh, all the logic locking technique, which is actually have you know, high output corruptivity. Right? So, and then there are a lot of techniques come up with low output corruptivity, and then there are attacks and so on. So, I'm not going to into that that uh, that particular area. But what motivates us in this work is something. So, in the EDA domain, the abstraction is the key, right? So, we always go for the abstraction, higher abstraction level, so that my design size is small, so that I can actually do the design in very quick time and uh, i can get my design in uh, i mean total uh, time total time for the development and verification is very less right so the abstraction is the key in the idea how in the idea domain and uh, so basically the recent times we have seen that about this logic locking the, although the primary focus on the gate level circuits 
so re re recent focus moves in the abstraction level in the rtl level and in the higher ab abstraction level like uh, this high level specification like cc plus plus right so moving this uh, logic locking from this get level to this rtl level or higher level has a very specific advantage that there are a lot of semantic information in the higher level of abstractions and actually logic locking can take advantage of them and if you do apply this locking at the higher abstraction level that really helpful because this this kind of semantic information is not available in the flat net list okay so with this uh, with this particular uh, uh, motivations i we found that there are several works in the recent times which basically try to uh, uh, abstract the control flow operations constant or the dependencies in the higher abstraction level uh, to uh, uh, to to basically de develop a rtl which is basically locked in nature and then uh, it basically take this control flow right and one of the prominent work is the tau which is published in uh, 2017 tag uh, which basically uh, uh, try to do the same thing in doing high level synthesis okay so it takes a c code and it produces a locked rtl where this control flow operations dependencies and constant get obfuscated right so just to uh, uh, quickly highlight about this tau is basically if you have a control uh, conditional statement it just uh, do xor with a key so that if, unless you have the key you cannot uh, uh, know the, what is the control flow and then similarly if you have operations it just adds some spurious operations like this and then you have a key just to decide which is the operations unless you know the correct key you cannot know you don't know what is the correct operation is going to happen in the rtl and similarly it just has and hide the constant we just encrypt the constant with xor right so but these are the and uh, these are the primary things that happen during this high level synthesis so the motivation of this particular work is obviously if you take this rtl move it to the get level and then apply this get level techniques it will work but um, we found that most of the tech time this the rtl that is generated by high level synthesis the get level attacks are not scalable to that uh, high i mean where there are hundreds of gates and flip flops right so so what we propose in this work is something can we just do the same thing at the rtl level right so can we apply the sat attack at the rtl level so specifically we our work is primarily motivated by the sat attack by promote uh, we basically model the same sat attack problem not at the get level circuit rather at the uh, rtl level circuit it's not even rtl we try to abstract out the c code out of this rtl and apply the sat attack on there and we have not used sat tool we have used smt smt tools in this flow Right, so let me just uh, go into that uh, part. So the primary part of this uh, attack is that we have a RTL, which is in very low or VSDL, which is generated by a high level synthesis tool, which is locked, right? And then what is our objective? We try to get the key out of that. And we have a functional Oracle, which is available with us. So with this attack model, what we try to see that we Take the RTL and we try to identify a RTL FSMD out of this uh, RTL. So RTL FSMD is nothing but a high, a high level C code, right? Once we have that C code, which is a locked again, which is obfuscated C code now we have, we have, and can we actually identify the keys from that? So that was the idea of this overall approach. And then once we have that uh, uh, that's locked or obfuscated C code we actually formulate a SMT IMS attack on that particular tool, which is similar to the SAT attack tool, uh, but it works on the, the C programs, and then it actually identifies the, uh, the keys in quick time. Right? So that was the overall idea. So the one key component of this overall approach is that abstracting out a C code from that RTL code, right? And which is actually given by this particular slide. So basically the RTL, which is generated by a high level synthesis tool, which has a very specific separable control controller FSM and the data path, right? So in the controller FSM, if you look into in detail, in every state, it generates some one zero signals. Uh, and then those based on these control signals, certain RTL of RT operation is going to execute in the data path, right? So what we did actually, we apply a rewriting based method to identify the register transfer level operation is happening in the RTL based on these control signals, right? Once we have this, we got this particular behavior, which is called FSMD finite state dimension data path and which is nothing but a high level behavior we can actually represent this fsmd as in a c code right and that is what is our input for the attack so i'm not going to uh, discuss on detail about this part because this is uh, still under submission in certain um, journal but the basic idea was that that we abstract out a high level c code from that rtl once we have that c code uh, which is obfuscated 
we are just doing the same set attack on that particular code which what we are doing basically we uh, we basically try to every interest and we model that c code as a uh, symbolic formulas in the z3 uh, smt solver and every time i'm going to ask is there in dip distinguishing important patterns or not right so in every iteration i'm going to find out dip and i'll keep asking the solver to give me dip and once i do not find any dips the solver will, re will reply me a unset the problem is unset and then i'll get the key from that right so that is the overall idea of this set attack and the same thing is happening here so i'm skipping the idea of the dip and all this is all known and known. so basically uh, in this uh, this set attack we have two copy of the circuit so uh, this is uh, two circuit and we have two copy of the keys and we give this uh, we try to find out a x for which these two copy of the circuit produce the different output right so this is what is the set attack model so every iteration what it does it prune out a set of keys and it's not a single key but a set of keys a class of keys it extra reduce every iteration so in quickly it actually reduce to the uh, eliminate all the incorrect keys and it actually report the correct key right that is the overall attack flow so in our tool flow what it does we develop a parser which take a very low code which is generated by a high level synthesis tool and it generate a rtl fsmd Right, so the RTL FSMD is nothing but a you can as that's a C code, and then we have used the tool called CLI, which is a symbolic uh, simulator, uh, so symbolic tool which actually represents that C program as a symbolic formula. Right, so it's basically the high level idea of this CLI is that it takes the C code, you identify all the traces in the C code, and that just model that as a IT IT operator that if then else. Right, so if this condition holds, then output will be this. If this condition holds, this output will be this, and so on. It's a symbolic formula about all the traces of the C program. Obviously, here the loop is bounded; otherwise, this clue won't work. So, we the, our tool is limited by the loops, where the loops are basically static. Uh, the bound is known in the static type. Okay. So, once we have that symbolic model of that C program, what we do is just do the DIP formulation, and then we just run this particular uh, SMT solver in an iter iterative manner. And then until I found I found the correct key, right? So that's the idea. So uh, this uh, so here is an example which uh, Ramon is going to show in the uh, in the demo. The same example uh, as a basic uh, uh, just to understand the overall flow. That if you see you have a uh, events where this K1 and K2 is the, the, the constant of obfuscation, and this C1 is something is the control of obfuscation. And here is this is the first two lines is the model of that um, program in, uh, which is developed by uh, given by this CLI. And then we create a two copy this out one and out two uh, just for and this uh, two copy of the K1 and K2. Mm, uh, and then every iteration it returns that. So uh, the first iter iteration one it, or iteration two it returns the value of the input A and B zero for which DIP is found and the corresponding output is zero. So when, I, when I'm going to put this value into these equations. I'm going to get a constant about the keys, right? So I'm just going to add this key constant addition to the initial formulation, and then again I'm going to call this uh, uh, SMT tool Z3 uh, to give me the DIP, and it return the DIP is A equal to minus five and B equal to minus one, and for that the Oracle return me the output minus three. So once I put this value into these two equations, it give me another set of constants. So it's basically every iteration so I'm actually reducing the solution space or the I'm adding constant so that I actually reduce the key space, start space, right? So this is how it's going on. In the fourth iteration, it's again give a DIP and the fifth iteration, it say that this is unset and the correct key is this. And we'll show that this is the, exactly the correct key during the demonstration of the tool, okay? So in this experimental setup, uh, so what we have done is basically my, the other counterpart of our collaborator, they provide us the very low code, which is generated by a tool called Bamboo. Which is primarily developed by Christian, so it's give, it's just give a very log obfuscated very log code to us, and also a exe file of the input C code. So these are the two input is given to us, and Ramanuj and me was just working on the SMT attack, and we try to find out the key, and then once I found out the key, we, this is going to get confirmed by Christian and the team. Okay, that was the overall um, uh, the model we have followed during our experimentation. And the experiment result was encouraging. So we have driven uh, some uh, HLS benchmarks like Waka, ARM, Motion, and which is, you can see the number of line of code in the RTL is quite big. And this is the kind of uh, obfuscation is happening here. And the, what are the key size is also impressive. And this is, uh, you remember, this is generated by the uh, 
bamboo tool okay and in quick iterations you can see the number of iterations is uh, not much so and uh, we are able to identify the keys and you can understand this uh, size of the gates i mean circuits is also quite high and the runtime is also in, in less than hour you can see the runtime and the memory usage is also not that much and since this uh, the particular particular attack works on the obfuscated c code so we have taken the c code and obfuscated it for a bigger key uh, and where the key size is around to also 200 greater than 200s and then we can see that uh, in quick time i mean within one hour we are able to extract the keys there are certain instances where we are not able to get the key where the run time is more than 10 hours uh, we identify that in those cases there are a lot of multipliers and we identify specifically that the unset was not uh, zith is not able to prove the unset so we are working on that how to uh, get the correct key in that those scenarios as well okay so so that's all about this uh, the overall idea of the tool i hope uh, you understand so we'll be happy to uh, uh, i mean answer any doubts uh, uh, from the tool but i now request ramanuj to just give the demo of the tool thank you Yeah, you're audible, Ramanuj. Yeah, we yes, can. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So this one is the example which was available in the PPT. So as I explained that this is the my obfuscated seed code which we are getting from our enhanced tool. Okay, for a given uh, logged RTL, then this is a our OR, our original file. Okay. Then for our tool, we need the two things. One is the obfuscated file. Obfuscated C code. For this one, obfuscated C code will look like this, where we have obfuscated the control flow stack, control flow, and then some constant we have obfuscated. And then, uh, and uh, please note that that uh, obfuscated file name should be obfuscated.c file. It is convention for our tool. And then we are giving one input must be there that is Oracle. That is Oracle means you can see, uh, if you realize, then Oracle is uh, this is Oracle means this one is a uh exe file of the current uh correct uh, program and then when when we will use we will use this one oracle to find out the for this input what is the correct output for a given input what is the correct output and then one more file is there input file which is a uh, nothing just uh, the information to a tool uh, this variable is an input variable okay, if i am giving the a a b zero zero means these are the input variable this k1 k2 c1 means these are the my uh, Obfuscated variable. These are the keys which which we use to obfuscate the code. And then the out this out two means this is a output variable. This input we will. This is the input for our tool. Okay. Then if you want to run the our tool, then so this is my tool. Then we are giving the input as a as a command line argument to the my tool. Then when we run it the tool, then if you see it will run. Uh, it will so uh, if at the last it will say set and directly completed it means uh, and it will generate the file uh, it will it will produce the key and it will store in the key file if i will show you then key it will show the k is equal to 5 k1 is equal to 5 k2 is equal to 3 and c1 is equal to 0 so this is same as the like a 5 3 and 0 it's like a okay and then we are also generating the report which says that uh, how many inputs there how many outputs the number of keys how many boolean keys is there integer keys there what is size of the total and the number of iterations total instructions and then uh, total time and time how much memory used by the tool okay and then and just i will just let i will go a little bit more inside the tool what is happening in the tool okay then if you will see when we will run the tool there are number of uh, uh, temporary file is created i have not deleted because so that it will be useful for you to understand what is happening the things and if you see the first time when we give this one when we and please note that we we are giving the obfuscated.c file obfuscated file and then from and we will use the cli to generate the final symbolic expression for the given output variable so then after that one in the smt leak format then if then you can see here jet3 input 0 this is the first one 
this is the this is the v this is the code smt lib code it is in the we use the bit vector format okay and then this is just generated by the our cli tool and it's not actually this is not generated actually not generated closely but we have modified based on our requirement the cli tool to generate the our uh, the tool code something like that okay and then when we will give this one this is the first iterations this is smt lib code which we are giving to the a jet three solver in the first station in the first station and you will see here the last if you see like the last here we are writing that out one should not be equal to out two okay and these are the all the symbolic expression for the output variable because in our in our c program in our obfuscate file there is a if like there is two part that's why for one part this is a this is expression for the second part this is expression and the same copy with the different key variable values okay and then when we give this one j3 this one to the smt solvers what will happen it will generate the some key it will generate the input pair for it will generate the, it will generate input means it will find the key dip and then with the dip we will what we will do we will add this one that dip as a constant to the given input uh, given the uh, given op, uh, given j3 file then it, again we will get the you can see in the first iteration if we will If we will do the win, did get three equal zero in the three equal one. So if you will see that first uh, as it is, and the uh, and the later we are adding the this constraint to the our get three input one zero file. Means these are the these are constraint which we are getting by replacing the input variables and the output variables uh, in the uh, formula which generated in the first iteration. and you can see here in this one only key variable is available all the all the input and output variables have been displaced by the their values okay and then when we will give this after after updating this one we again giving the z3 solvers that will generate the some constant and again adding at the last what we will get one till we will not get the until we will not get the unset then in the second iterations when we are getting this one then you see in the second iteration when we will not get the unset we when we will get the unset then we are negating the formula means we are now writing the now let me know the what is the correct value of the key by making by uh, by making the reverse of the dead formula negate of the formula means now out one should be equal to out two so in this way we are able to get the key values um, this are the very try example to understand the what, what's happens in our tool and all these things so this is the this is a jet three input first iteration this is second iteration and the this is last iteration uh, and in that one we will get the key values this is the total thing these are some input files uh, uh, temporary input files which generating during the our um, attack this is the thing and then now i can give the some example which we have used uh, uh, in our uh, experiment cd walk up to as sorry if you see here uh, this is the if you will go to the very long ls win this is the this is the office gate if you will see here if you will search the sign key then you can see here this is the office gate very long code we have which we have we are here we are apply the keys okay in the operations in the marks operation operation here we are getting apply the keys also this is the office gate very long code from the office gate very long code we are getting the sorry and we are we will generate the office gate c file if you will see the our office gate file this is a office gate file in the control for structures form here as states and this is the my office gate c file for the given equivalent uh, uh, for the given uh, office gate uh, very log code and then now if we give now and this is the input for our this one this is the this is the input this is the my input variable this is the key and this is the my output variable and this is output variables okay and this is the temporary variables also we are getting is not necessary but we can write also okay this is the thing and then this is the oracle a dot out is a oracle uh, oracle uh, means this is a oracle file okay now if we run it So it is it finding the uh, if if it is if, if it is getting the set then again it is trying to find out the some DIP if, until it will it will stop until it will not get able to find out the DIP.
then in division three, it whenever it's taking time means we can understand that okay now his DIP is getting difficult to find and it may possible that we can get unset in this iteration. Then that's why uh, for some case when we are where we are getting the 10, 10 hours then we understand okay this is the last one but we are not able to prove that other things. So if you see here BIM key generate the key files and then see some key values are one some it is able to find out the key values in our during our experiment we used to send this key values to the our partners and they will they will uh, confirm us okay this is the correct keys this is the correct key uh, find out whether we have tools so this is the thing and then if we want to see the this is a very uh, i wrote in a very simple way the things there if you will go to the page of this is just some idea i will give the flow of the my sorry yeah this is my flow means first i will read the input file and then i will generate the uh, require input file for the given for the cli i will give the cli this input and then i will compile and execute the cli to generate the um, our SMT lib format file and then that SMT lib format file will be given to the Jet3 solver and Jet3 solver will uh, then Jet3 servers and and we will do this thing this is while loop until we will not get the unset this one this while loop is what for what until we will not get the unset once if we got the set we are getting the we are we are running the we are we are executing the oracle and then getting the output variable and then adding the constant and then again doing the same thing again and again until we are not getting the uh, unset once we got the unset then okay we are coming outside the loop and then we are generating the key file so we are finding the key file by making the reversing the constant this is the, the overall flow of our tool and then if something i'm missing then sir you can tell me thanks so i think uh, this is uh, perfect ramanu so uh, there are uh, few questions so uh, should yeah. i answer professor Z? right right let me just read this uh, quickly so that uh, we answer this one by one or uh, you yeah it's even better you share the screen so first question is from xiaolong guo so for the attack tool flow in the uh, parsing from log to rtl to rtl fsmd automatically uh, or not uh, where yes. what's the data yeah. Of it's a very good question. So yes, we have a parser which works for uh, uh, Verilog generated by Bamboo as well as HLS, I mean, Verilog generated by a Vivado HLS tool. And we automatically generate the RTL FSMD and write it in C format. Okay, so the data structure, the data is by default unsigned in, in the C. So uh, our generated code is a C code, which is basically can be compiled with GCC as well. Uh, so this is the, I hope I am able to answer the question. So I'm not sharing that tool here when I'm just, uh, when I'm sorry for that because the tool, the tool is under uh, submission in a leading journal. So once that is get accepted, I'm going to share that uh, tool in this particular form as well. Okay. I guess people are all waiting for that. And that's the goal of the definitely release that through Cato for Assurance website. <laughs> yes. I, I will share it in that in the same tool, uh, tool flow. I'm not. But this particular RTL attack tool uh, just takes us obfuscated C code, right? So uh, as of now, if you just have a obfuscated C code, you can just use our tool uh, for, for the time being. But once we have this tool, it will release in any time soon. Uh, and then the very, very log code generated by Vivada HLS or Bamboo, uh, it should go through in our flow. Okay. Okay, that's good. So then the second question is this. Uh, what is the threat model for RTL locking? So does the attacker have the locked RTL? If not, yes. can they reverse so, the engineer in the net list to get to the locked RTL? So is this the question by uh, 11th or so? Uh, no, it's the question by, by John T. Okay, John T. Yeah, so in our attack model, we assume that the locked RTL is available with us and uh, we have the Oracle. Oracle is a, in the current flow, we have assumed it's a EXE code. It's basically uh, because the high level synthesis uh, generated a C code. This is targeted the bamboo and tau. 
So we assume that our Oracle is a EXE, which is a binary version of a, any C code, but it is easy to just replace that with a Verilog as well. So we can have a, a Verilog code or the running version of the Verilog code because we don't want to see the original code, right? So we need a, some running version of the code. But if I just give the input, it should give me for the output. So any other version also, I, I mean, we can easily incorporate in our flow. But currently, it is just a .exe file generated by GCC. Uh, yeah. So I, I think the, the next the, question, the, I think, by Oxoy. Are the same. The next two questions are the same. Are they working on the RT level? And why the demo looks like on that list? Uh, so yeah, the question is, yes, the answer is uh, to this question that uh, this is tool works on the RTL level. But as I mentioned in my initial uh, talk, that we extract out a C code from the C uh, the RTL, right? So in that, if you just took this particular attack tool uh, as a individual component, it does not take RTL because it takes a C code, obfuscated C code and an Oracle and works on that. But the first part of this whole uh, paper or the work was just to develop I mean, a parser which generate a C code from the RTL. So uh, I have not shown uh, that part in this demo because that was not still re released yet. But it is it is actually take a very low code RTL. I see. Okay. So the the flow is from RTL locked unlocked into C locked unlocked, and then you run in yes. the um, set attack on top SM, of using yes, SMT, on the yeah. C, uh, uh, SMT attack on the C code. Convert to the C code. Exactly. exactly. Okay, that's that's good. So, I assume that uh, we are many of us will be following the the Cadre for Assurance uh, website for updates. Uh, for the audience, don't worry because whenever uh, we have new tools, new benchmark released, I will send in an email. Uh, normally, I send email once per month, not to spend your email box. Any other questions? So I think there is a question in the uh, chat box from Ruby Mistral and oh, okay. he, her question is, yeah, so the question is if we have a design in Verilog code, then can we proceed with this tool? The answer is that it does not work for any Verilog. If the Verilog is generated by high level synthesis tool, then this tool will be applicable because the, the tool was targeted, the Verilog generated by high level synthesis. It won't work for generic Verilog. Uh, can you just uh, clarify that uh, the any Verilog or Verilog yeah, so generated by high level? I, 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 yeah, so it's a very good question. So see if you uh, see that by presentation time, so we assume that in the RTL we have a control path and data path separable. Okay, so what we did is basically in the controller FSM in the every state we try to analyze the data path to identify what kind of operation is happening in the data path in the control state, right? So if in a generic Verilog where this control path and data path is not separable, uh, then our tool won't be able to identify this uh, RTL FSMD. But this is not true for high level synthesis because high level synthesis always generate RTL which is has a control path and data path separable. So, uh, so, uh, so basically it will work for any high level synthesis tool, but not for generic Verilog. But there are certain tool I can I want to uh, introduce to the uh, this uh, audience that there is a tool called very letter. So very letter actually take any very long and generate a C code out of it. So uh, we are actually looking into that part as well. So can this uh, we use very letter in our tool and whatever the C code is generated by very letter uh, can our SMT solver uh, SMT attack tool work on that. So that part is still under investigation. Uh, if something positive comes out, we definitely uh, update in the website. So that's the scenario. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Many thanks. So uh, I think we it's uh, good time. So we uh, we will switch to the uh, next speaker or next presentation. Uh, thanks, Chandra. Thanks, uh, Ramanij Nuj. Okay. So yeah, thank you again uh, for the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so the second presentation is uh, from uh, Dr. Avesta Assassin's group. 
um, we have Hadi, uh, we have uh, Kimia in the um, in the panelist, and uh, uh, I think Hadi will be the main presenter. So the topic is also on SMT attack, and uh, uh, let's see uh, what they would provide to us. So the same thing, if you have any questions, uh, please just uh, put those questions on the uh, question and answer uh, session and we will answer them together uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. So Hadi and Avesta. Um, so um, let, me, let me start with, uh, this is Avesta Sasan. Uh, uh, professor at ECE department, George Mason University. So let me just do a brief introduction. Uh, in this presentation, we are presenting uh, basically the satisfiability modular theory attack. This is an extension of the satisfiability attack that uh, my students, Hadi and Kimia, have worked extensively on this. Uh, so, uh, based on this presentation, you will see that the satisfiability modulo theory attack is a superset of the SAT attack. It builds on the capabilities of the SAT attack by adding new dimensions to it. The ability to use uh, modulo theory solvers to define additional constraints that are quite difficult to specify in a regular SAT attack, and that would extend the capability of the SAT attack uh, extensively, allowing you to uh, model new problems, build new attacks, um, perhaps accelerate the uh, existing SAT attack, formulate uh, approximate SAT attacks only with adding few lines of code. So the uh, modular theory solver allow you, uh, provide you with this ability uh, to have uh, a very interesting modeling capability, allowing you to provide constraint solvers uh, that work either as a preprocessor, postprocessor, or coprocessor to a SAT solver. And if it works as a coprocessor, it allows a dynamic exchange of the clauses, learn clauses, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that would allow you to prune your search tree effectively and uh, allow you to formulate a much, much stronger attack. Now, uh, this uh, presentation is given by Hadi, uh, one of my most able uh, PhD students. He actually, Hadi and Kimia uh, will be joining University of Florida uh, next fall, or actually this fall, this coming fall as a postdoc uh, to uh, basically continue their education. But, here is, uh, here is our presentation on satisfiability modulo tier attack from a user perspective. So the focus is really on how to use uh, the tool, how to run the tool, how to uh, basically build and formulate uh, different attack scenarios using this. So Hadi, uh, take it away. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sasan. Thanks, Dr. Jean. Thank you. Uh, for your introduction. Thanks to our really said on Cat for Insurance, giving us this opportunity to present our tool here in this webinar. Uh, regarding this presentation, I will uh, give you a very fast, um, very brief uh, introduction regarding the theory behind the SMT solver and SMT attack we introduced here. This is a paper pub, uh, I accepted and published in chess conference in 2019. Uh, so first I will cover them very fast. Then. Uh, based on some case studies, I will show you how you can call invoke SMT attacks in different uh, scenarios, uh, different algorithms, and then I'll conclude the talk. So uh, as we all know, the SAT attack received a lot of attention in, re in recent years, since 2015, and this is the overall view of the SAT attack. In the SAT attack, we have an iterative structure in which we are using the SAT solver, Boolean SAT is solver, to find some specific inputs on this circuit, which is the double circuit, uh, same circuit, duplicated, same uh, input, discriminating input, two different key values, finding different outputs. And by using the satisfiability, uh, Boolean satisfiable solver, we are trying to find discriminating input uh, following this flow demonstrated here, uh, which is 
pruning of the in, in, in correct keys uh, to find the correct key. But the question is that what is the limitation of the SAT attack? And what is the motivation actually behind introduction of this? And the first uh, of motiv uh, limitation of the SAT attack is that SAT works fine if the logic log netlist is of Boolean nature, uh, because uh, the Boolean satisfies the server as the main part of the SAT attack receive input in conjunctive normal form. So everything should be in a Boolean representation. So uh, the, we can trap the SAT solver by using non-logical expected behavior of the circuit uh, as a part of logic locking or control aspect of a circuit that could be uh, that could not be translated into this uh, CNA. For example, uh, this is a very uh, simple example showing that uh, how we can introduce logic locking technique. This is delay-based logic locking. Uh, showing that how we can obfuscate the delay of circuit, for example, timing passes set off time or hold time, and making them dependent to the key value, making sure that the, the, the key value uh, determines the correct functionality as well as correct uh, timing uh, constraint into design. And by having this structure set attack, uh, cannot break this structure. The second um, limitation of the set attack here is that Based on the double circuit generated in the SAT attack, uh, SAT attack will find dips whenever at least there is one difference between a different number of outputs of the double circuit. So there is no differences between the left case that I demonstrated here, um, in which there is only one differentiation between two uh, different keys in double circuits. And there is no differentiation between this one and this one, which has more uh, output uh, differentiation in the right side. So uh, based on this limitation of the SAT attack in a period of something like 2016, 2017, uh, we faced uh, some um, techniques in which we, we can call them compound logic locking. In compound logic locking, we see that, for example, point function techniques are combined with, for example, traditional logic locking. Traditional logic locking has high corruptibility, can corrupt more outputs. However, on the other side, point function that is resilient against the SAT attack has low corruptibility. So by combining these two, SAT attack cannot find the correct key from this version of the uh, lock circuit. Uh, so uh, the problem is that if, uh, since the SAT attack cannot distinguish between the left case and the right case here, so it is hard for the SAT solver to distinguish between these two forms of obfuscation. So um, the question is that how we can bring uh, this option into SMT attack to get the benefit of SMT solver. So this is the overall structure of the SMT solver. In SMT solver, we have SAT solver. SMT solver is super set of SAT attack, SAT solver. So uh, in this SMT attack, we have SAT attack on one, SAT solver on, on one side. We have two resolvers on, on, the, on the other side. They are communicating with each other based on the number of two resolvers, uh, the type of two resolvers used, the, they could be invoked to, for example, uh, target some form of obfuscation. And in this uh, presentation, we will uh, focus and emphasize graph two resolvers for delay-based logic locking and bit vector two resolvers for having distance-based solving of the lock circuit. So regarding the graph to resolve it, this is what SMT brings for us. Assuming that the circuit, for example, this is an obfuscated circuit, and assuming that uh, this circuit is obfuscated using tunable delay gates, which obfuscate timing as well as function, the SMT solver provide two different solver for us. On one side, we have SAT solver, which is the Boolean representation as we had before in the past, but on the other hand, we have graph to resolver. So we can provide a model, a graph representation of the circuit, which model the timing behavior and timing information of the circuit. For, for example, in this uh, graph to resolver, we are using the weight of edges as the normalized the delay of passes or the gates in the obfuscated circuit. So by having these two models, we are able to break, for example, or target delay-based logic locking in SMT attack. Then another example, then another application of the SMT attack is something like this. This is the double circuit. We have two circuits, the same lock circuit, duplicated, same input connected to both, different keys connected. We are looking to differences in, this read, in the traditional set attacks. So at least one difference is enough, even one 
uh, differentiation between these two circuits is enough in the set. But the question is that what if we are going to um, um, make it more advanced? Having a Hamming distance through resolver here, working based on the Hamming distance construct, counting and evaluating the number of differentiation between the uh, these two out the output of th those uh, double circuit, and for example, prioritizing uh, those discriminating inputs that provide that produces actually the more uh, differentiation in the output. So. By using this structure, by using bit vector through solver in the SMT attack, we are able now to distinguish between the left one and right one. And if this one is more important for us, trying to um, limit and reduce the constraint to find this one first and then go through this one. So uh, this is the uh, this was the theory behind the SMT attack. The main motivation behind the SMT attack there regarding the tool. Uh, uh, and regarding the code of the source code of the SMT attack, now it is available on uh, Gate uh, Laboratory GitHub. Uh, we just uh, recently updated uh, with more detail regarding how you can set up, how we can build the code, how we can use it. It is built over uh, actually a monoset solver, which is a, a Z3 based uh, uh, SMT solver. So uh, many steps of this work is related to the setup of the monoset as well. So um, based on this building, you can build the uh, uh, SMT attack, SMT tool on your system. On the other hand, we also provided a very uh, comprehensive uh, uh, usage for the SMT attack. What algorithms we are supporting? What options do we have in the uh, SMT tool. And in this presentation, based on some case study, I want to show you that how, for example, you can use these algorithms demonstrated here, or how you can use these options during uh, the run of the SMT tool. So let's start with the first case study, uh, which is uh, the reduced version of the SMT attack. Uh, when we are, as we, are, we are talking about the SMT attack, uh, and it is a combination of two resolver and set solver, uh, we know that uh, it is a superset of the set attack. So the question is that, is it possible to reduce the size of the SMT tool in, to be used as a pure, as a traditional set solver, set attack? And the question is yes. So we can disable, for example, two resolvers in this uh, version, in this uh, case study to um, use it as, as, as a traditional set attack. So this is a very simple example. This is ISCAS C17, the smallest uh, ISCAS 85 circuit, obfuscated with very uh, simple XOR based random with three key inputs. And this is uh, showing that how, for example, you can call the tool. So it is based on Python 3. You can uh, call it using Python 3, the SMT tool. You can determine the algorithm using the option algorithm. In this case, it is reduced set. You can determine the original uh, circuit using the original option. So here in this case, it is C17. You can determine the obfuscated circuit using the obfuscated option, and you can run the code. So we see that, for example, in the SMT attack, the functional execution time is demonstrated after running and after termination, the key value, and so on. So of course, very similar to what we saw so far in the traditional set attack uh, introduced by Sarah Romanian and their team. So uh, this is a very simple example of a reduced set attack. In this slide, I want to show you, for example, the, one of the options we are providing in the SMT attack, which is the ver different verbosity level constructed on logging uh, package in Python 3. So for example, this verbosity allows us to understand different algorithms in the SMT attack much, much better with more details as well. So when we are changing the verbosity, for example, from 0 to 1, we see more printed. Uh, when we change it from 1 to 2, uh, here in this case, we see much, much more printers, for example, uh, the detail of some iteration in the set attack and some other prints as well. And when we go into the last version, the debug version, which is the verbosity tree, we see that every step, every operations in the SMT tool, you can go through them step by step, see how, for example, the reduced version of the set attack or other algorithms work in the SMT attack, hel helping us very good uh, demonstration helping us to uh, understand the algorithm better and better. So this verbosity option helps you to understand the uh, uh, flow as well. So uh, this is another option. This is another example, actually, of the uh, radio set attack we see here on a bigger circuit. For example, C2670, one of the biggest circuits in ISCAS 85. We see the key generated by the uh, algorithm, the functional iteration, the functional execution, and also 
printed and uh, pr presented in the raw. The next case, the case study we are going to show in this example is the delay-based logic locking. As I said, uh, we can uh, use two different solvers. First, the graph theory solver, the second SAT solver to model uh, uh, Delay-based logic locking. This version of attack on delay-based logic locking is based on the eager mode of the SMT attack. SMT attack or SMT solver mainly work, uh, works on two different uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, the first model, the first option is the eager mode. And the eager, in eager mode, we see that, for example, here, we see that the theory solver are used as a pre-processing step, and then we are calling the set attack. On the other hand, we show in next few slides that uh, we have lazy mode in which the theory solver and SAT solver are working in parallel. So there is no pre-processing asset. This is a very simple example of delay-based logic locking. We are assuming that this is, and this is the circuit uh, representing this uh, locked design. In this one, we have two naval delay gates. And here we see that, for example, in the benchmarks, we model the delay, uh, two naval delay gates based on two different values, which is the normalized delay of the circuit, delay of that gate. For example, if in this case, the two naval delay gate uh, is based on key one is zero, the delay, the normalized delays is one. And if it is the, the key one is one in this case, the normalized delay is two. So based on this definition, delay units could, could be added as a gate into the design or as a wire into the design. And by using this structure, we can solve um, the and target the delay-based logic locking using the SMT tool. So this is another run uh, showing that how we can use the eager mode. So it is still based on Python 3, we call SMT tool. Algorithm in this case is eager SMT on delay locking, logic locking. The original uh, circuit, uh, like the previous one, is C17. And the obfuscated circuit in this case is the delay logic locking. So we are calling DLL obfuscated C17 for, which is for delay uh, module. We also have maximum delay and minimum delay, which demonstrate and represent the um, setup time and hold time for each timing passes in this, for example, soft circuit. And we are going to run this using the SMT tool. So when we run it, we see it, it is doing in two uh, steps. The first step is graph solving, trying to work on uh, the key related to the, the part that is non-functional, which is the graph to solver. Then after ending the graph solving, we see that it is start running, for example, the iteration related to the uh, functional phase, which is the Boolean satisfied. After that, we see that the key is generated on both sides, the functional execution time related to uh, the Boolean representation, this solver, and non-functional execution time on the other hand, it is related to the graph theory solver, and it is working based on this fact. This is another example on eager mode on a bigger circuit. Uh, we see it on C432, 25% of us gated. Maximum delay in this case is 26, minimum delay is four. And when we are running, we see again two steps, two level. The first level is graph solving, iteratively trying to find the key related to the delay base. And after finding the key related to the delay base, we are uh, seeing that, uh, functional phase is going to be solved. And then the key value, the functional execution time, and on the other hand, non-functional execution time related to the graph to resolve it. And this is a, a part of the code. Uh, you can have them um, and access them through the GitHub. Uh, and this is showing that how, for example, eager mode, which is the pre-processing using theory and after that SAT solver, we see that the delay key is trying to be modeled and found by using graph dependent, def dependencies, graph theory solvers, the function that we have in the code. And after finding the delay keys related, the keys related to the delay part, we see that there is an iterative structure for finding different uh, uh, SAT side, SAT base side. So, and after that, we see that the uh, key, found on both sides, delay part and functional uh, part is combined together in this example. This is on the same example, the circuit is like using two-level delay gate, but now this time, as I said, it is on lazy mode 
And in lazy mode, we see that true solver is called uh, in parallel with the set solver, they are communicating each, 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 with each other to communicate the constraint. The same example is used as the case study here. And we see a simple run here as well, calling the Python tree on uh, SMT tool. The algorithm in this case, we see that it is lazy SMT. The original circuit is the same, uh, which is C17. The obfuscated circuit also is the same, which is the C17 DLL uh, with four delay units. Uh, and unlike the previous cases, uh, which has two levels of solving, first graph solving, then functional solving. In this case, in the prints, in the flow of the algorithms, we see that it is only has one step, one level of solving, which is looking for dips uh, uh, that, is set, um, that meet the satisfiability assignment on both sides, returning the key, and we don't have any decoupled execution time one for functional side, one for non-functional side. We see the total SMT solve in this case. And this is a very simple example how you can call and invoke the SMT tool for, based on the lazy approach on delay-based logic blocking. This is a sim another example on lazy. Again, on C432, 40, uh, 25% of was created, maximum delay 26, minimum delay four. And we see that again, some iterations, just one step, one level of solving in lazy, the key value, finishing uh, the lazy solver, finishing uh, based on the key value, the funk and total time of the SAS solver also printed here. So this is uh, similar to what I tried to show um, in the eager mode, which is pre-processing after the SAS solver. In the lazy, we have just only one option, one function, which is find deep lazy, and in find deep lazy, we are going to model both together and try to call the SMT solver just once on both solvers and trying to find the key value related to the lazy part. Let's go to the next case study, which is uh, using the bit vector to resolver, get the benefit of having distance uh, calculation and computation. Uh, and by using the Hamming distance to resolver, we show two different attacks. We have two different models here. One of them is approximate based. And in the approximate based, uh, we are going to target, for example, the compound logic locking, as I said previously. So uh, when we have traditional logic locking on one side, uh, it has uh, high corruptibility. On the other hand, uh, when we have point function, we have low corruptibility. So by using Hamming distance to resolver, we are trying to first focus on the keys related to the traditional part, which has high corruptibility. So when the corruptibility is high, it meaning that uh, the number of differentiation at the output of the double circuit is high. So we are going to find those discriminating input that produce outputs with higher Hamming distances. And then after bunch of iteration uh, based on a, an error rate formulation, we try to terminate the algorithm and guess the key value related, the, uh, related to the point function. The problem is that regarding the traditional SAT attack, if we uh, give this circuit to the SAT attack, the SAT attack cannot solve it because the point function techniques adds exponential number of iterations uh, to the SAT solver to find the correct key. And this uh, video here in this case, shows that if we are going to solve this one using the reduced set, which is the traditional set, we face exponential number of iteration. This is the problem of the set attack, uh, the tra traditional one um, against uh, compound logic locking. And this run confirms and validates this uh, observation, which is on C432 on Sarlock plus random. So it is obfuscated with a point function plus random obfuscation. And we see that it face, uh, if we wait here, for example, for hours and hours, we see thousands and hundreds of thousands of, for example, iteration to find the key value, exponential number of iteration. Now in the SMT attack, we try to, instead of using this approach, which is the traditional set, we are going to model it using this approach based on the, for example, uh, Hamming distance to resolver. So we introduce another algorithm 
Uh, and this one, it is approximated base. So we call it SMT approximate. And here on left side, we see again, the radius version of the SAT, which is a radius SAT. And on the right side, we see that it is solving based on the SMT approximate. So the right one is based on this formulation and the left one is based on this formulation. And we see that in the left one, we face exponential number of iteration. But in the right one, we see that, for example, after few iteration in this case, uh, in this case, it is 51 cases, it returns a key in which it, it guarantees that the key related to the traditional part is correct. And the key related to the point function uh, produces error less than a threshold determined in the code. But on the left side, we see that it faces exponential number of iteration. So this is the difference between the approximate base using Hamming distances and the left one, the SAT attack and the algorithm, which is SMT approximate here. And the last uh, case study here we are going to show is another application of, for example, the Hamming distance solver. In this presentation, we cover, and in the code at the moment, we combine two theory solver. One was the graph theory solver, the second is Hamming distance. But this uh, flow shows that the usage of theory solvers would help us to make more advanced attack uh, on richer languages with uh, more capability on solving the problems. This is another usage of Hamming distance solvers in which we are going to prioritizing dips at the discriminating inputs that produce more differentiation in the output. And the question is that, for example, if we are able to produce these dips first at the first stage of the attack, at the earliest stage of the attack, does it provide any advantage for us? So we are trying to see that, is there any acceleration possibility here? And the answer to, the, to this question, it was yes. And it helps in significant parts of the experiments showing us that when we are going to find, for example, dips that produce higher Hamming distances at, that, at the output, the number of iteration might reduce compared to the traditional set attack. Another algorithm we introduced here on the right side, it is not SMT approximate in this case, it is uh, SMT Hamming based version and we call it SMT Hamming. So the left one is radius set, but the right one is SMT Hamming as we see here. And they are running on the same circuit obfuscated on the uh, same approach. Yes. Uh, so we see that on the right one, it is, uh, I don't know why it's not playing. Okay, so uh, let's go to the end. I don't know why the video doesn't, but at the end in this, in this run, they are running on the same circuits. So let, let, let me show you first the options that we are using for both cases. On the left one, we see that this is reduced set. On the right one, we see that it is SMT Hamming based on this approach, trying to find those dips that produce higher Hamming distances. On the same circuit, C432, C432, 25 person obfuscated using a specific obfuscation technique on both sides. And when we go to the end of the video, so we see that on the right one, the number of iteration is eight and it could be solved in four seconds. However, in the left one, we see that the number of iteration is 13 and the number, the functional execution time is 14 seconds. So this is the difference between the usage of Hamming distance to kind of accelerate in some cases, the solving problems. However, on the left one, we see the settle. And these were some uh, case studies which we, are we were trying to uh, show how SMT attack work, but uh, um, for more algorithm, for more options, you can um, go to the gate laboratory, GitHub now. The code is available with usage, with building, and if you have any question, you can ask us directly through email here as well. And thank you for your attention. And I would be happy to answer your question as well. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Hadi. So uh, there already have multiple questions in the uh, Q&A session. So yes. 
uh, I will read us through them. Uh, maybe you can also open their window. So the first question. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I see the question. Um, okay. um, I can read them as well. So the first question is from John. He, he said that uh, does the SMT attack tool work for non-bench files? Uh, the SMT attack at the moment accept the input in bench, but the, uh, uh, if I want to give you a, a, a hint, the uh, benefit here, the advantage here is that the bench file is a very well used format of the uh, circuit. And you can use, for example, we didn't integrate them into the code, we can do it very easily, but there are some um, open source uh, synthesis tools such as Yosis and ABC that receive the synthesis version of the very log files and convert them to this bench format that is acceptable with SMT. We can integrate them into the code, but at the moment it is not integrated. But uh, the answer is that, the short answer is that if we combine these two together, yes, it can read even synthesized version of the very log file as well. So uh, Adi, I think that's that's a really good response, and I think that's a uh, you know that's a good suggestion to maybe yes, improve exactly. the capability of the tool. Maybe we can also, uh, I mean, in the future revision of the code, we can add uh, you know the use of use EOS yes. for ABC uh, to take other uh, input formats. But again, using ABC and EOS is quite easy, so you can, as Hadi suggested, you can uh, easily convert your um, uh, you know, uh, other uh, circuit formats to the bench format to be used with, within this code. Yes, yes. Um, I think based on this answer, we can also cover the second question again from Jonti. So uh, if you are looking for easy approaches for the end user to convert the log, very log file to bench file, I think Yosis and ABC is good. I, I'm not sure at the moment, but I think um, Yosis is much easier because it supports reading the file in very large format, uh, synthesizing them using the uh, very generic uh, very large library and writing the output of the synthesized version as well into the bench. So that's the answer I think to the question too. So you can use, I think Yosis is the best, better case than uh, the ABC. They are very similar to each other. How are the properties, the question three, um, how are the properties of delay cells defined in the bench file? Is there a generally library definition that is required for delay cells? For example, when using an open source tool like ABC. In the SMT attack, we are not trying to, at this step actually, uh, to automatically convert the delay from the locked circuit to, for example, locked very lock format to the bench file. But it, it is a still a, another good suggestion for us to add this one as well. When we are using, a, for example, graph theory solvers, we also include that part as well. In the current version of the code, we are assuming that, for example, the log circuit using the delay-based logic locking, the timing information of the passes is available, for example, from the synthesis tools, whatever, and we are converting them using another, uh, for example, S script to the input of the SMT attack. So the Thanks. next question. Yeah, we go to Xiaolong's question. Yeah, the next question is from uh, Xiaolong. Uh, for graph solving, how to model the time delay? As I said, uh, we are assuming at the moment for the delay-based logic locking, we are assuming that this is part of the thread modeling, this example, this scenario. Uh, maybe it is better to say that uh, the main uh, uh, aim of the introduction of the SMT tool and SMT attack is not how we can model timing or delay. The main aim is to show how to resolve it, such as graph to resolve it, such as Hamming distance to resolve it, such as reality, real based uh, inter integers uh, or uh, something like those solvers to be integrated and used as a means of uh, algorithm as, a, as, a, as, a, as, as an algorithm to have a more advanced, more complete uh, attack on the logic log circuit. But regarding the timing, uh, modeling the timing, modeling the delay, we are assuming that as a thread model, the adversary has access to the log circuit. 
with all information regarding the timing, regarding the clock frequency, regarding the library, the cells, everything. So everything could be reproduced on the lock circuit using the synthesis tool as well. Uh, I don't understand the second question, how to model the feedback signal. If uh, you clear that one with more exploration, I would be happy to. Right, I mean, so maybe, maybe I also uh, take a shot at this. Yes. So, uh, for the graph, um, the timings are annotated as delay of the edges. And as Hadi suggested, uh, considering that in our threat model, we consider that adversary has access to the GDS2, uh, we also assume that adversary has access to the standard cell library, because most likely um, a standard, a stand, uh, you know, a very common a standard cell library from a common uh, foundry's use. So obtaining this information is not difficult. And then when you convert the circuit to a graph, you can annotate the edges uh, with different delays. The constraints are obtained from the specification of the uh, IC. Uh, for example, when you write the equation for the setup and hold time as additional constraint uh, for the SMP solver, this equation could be uh, written based on the specification, based on the clock frequency at which the chip is operating. Now, uh, let me also take a shot at the second question, number two, how to model the feedback signal. So. Uh, here with the SMT attack, similar to uh, the SAT attack, we consider uh, or basically target combinational circuits. Uh, and for the sequential circuits, we assume that adversary has access to the scan chain. Uh, and with that assumption, the uh, logic between, uh, you know, every uh, set of two register launch and capture become um, also a combinational circuit. So, uh, the feedbacks here, uh, I guess, are kind of reduced uh, again to the combinational circuit between two sets of registers. And now the registers that is basically having a feed forward and a feedback could be uh, modeled twice in two combinational circuits for this, uh, for the purpose of uh, breaking the circuit. Uh, but uh, I guess one possible extension of the SMT attack is to um, also formulate uh, sequential uh, satisfiability modulo theory attacks, SMT attacks, uh, you know, removing the need uh, for access to the scan chain. That's, that's a possibility for extending this work, but that's something that we have not done. Uh, instead, I guess there is a new attack called the RAIN attack that we have recently developed. It's also advertised on uh, CAT for Assurance uh, uh, we are going to uh, perhaps release the code, the source code, uh, in a very near future. And in that one, you basically also have access to uh, a tool, an open source tool that does uh, sequential deobfuscation. Um, so, uh, thanks. Buddy, maybe go to the next question. Sure. sure. Thank you. And the next question is that. Uh, is there any logic, uh, a structure which makes the obfuscated design hard for the SMT solver to deobfuscate? Uh, yes, and your example is correct. Uh, regarding the complexity uh, perspective, SMT and SAT attack are on the same uh, side. Uh, I, it means that, for example, if there exists something that is complex, there exists the arc structure that is complex for that based attack, it, it is also, um, uh, let, me, let me define the uh, uh, complexity. In some cases, for example, when we have multipliers, when we have crossbars, when we have routing blocks in the circuits, uh, it doesn't increase the number of iteration in the SAT attack. It increases the complexity by increasing the execution time of each iteration. So uh, these examples are complex structure for SAT, the same for the SMT. 
uh, recently we investigated and uh, introduced a new attack, which is called NNG SAT, accepted in ICCAT 2020, showing that how uh, actually we investigate the possibility of using uh, neural network to simplify and finding a way to accelerate the deobfuscation process for such structures, such uh, complex structure. I would like to point you to that paper. Uh, maybe in the near future, we also release the code related to the NNG set, and we have another presentation in CAT for insurance for that one as well. So regarding the last question, would the SAT having distance accelerate attacking compound logging? No. Uh, it doesn't accelerate the compound logic locking. It is working very similar to the other approximate attacks in the literature, such as upset, such as double dip. It tries to, or such as other attacks on compound logic locking, such as bit flipping attack. It, it focuses on, it is, it, it, it uh, actually um, make us, uh, I, actually it, it, it Make it pos It makes it possible to concentrate and decouple between both different parts of the lo compound logic locking. I mean, point function and the. Uh, uh, Heidi, maybe maybe I also maybe I yes. also add something here. Sure. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, the question is the hamming distance on the compound part of it. So Heidi suggested. Uh, the SMT attack provide us a way to distinguish between the uh, sat hard portion of the logic obfuscation and uh, let's say the other part, the traditional part that basically uses, for example, random XOR gate, et cetera, et cetera. The part that is sat hard, let's say that it's a point function, that part cannot be acceler accelerated using uh, by basically including the hamming distance at the output. Because, you know, the pointer function, uh, that's the purpose of it for, you know, uh, you, for, uh, in, two uh, in two iteration, you basically find an input that they are different only uh, in one bit. So that does not accelerate that part, but it does accelerate the other part of it. So uh, if you are trying to formulate an approximate attack and extract the keys for <coughs> the random portion of this uh, compound logic locking, if you use a hamming distance at the output, it would accelerate that part of it. So you can accelerate the approximate attack and get the approximate key a lot faster. I also see another question in the chat box. Uh, does the SMT attack uh, work on uh, sequential circuits? Uh, no, it is similar to SAT attack. It is working on combinational circuits. So we are assuming similar to the SAT attack as a part of the thread model, we are assuming that the scan chain is available in this form of the attack. Yeah, so for the sequential, for the sequential attacks, I like you to look at two attacks. One is KC2. Um, uh, I guess KC2 is from Yergin group, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Kaveh is so, the main author. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, you have uh, the moderator, uh, Yerjin, here, the KC2 attack. That's one attack. And then the second attack is our attack uh, announced on the CAT4 assurance. It's called RAIN attack, but the code has not been released yet. We are going to release the open source code, hopefully within the next month, uh, 30 days or less. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I think we just have one last question. From yeah, there is another question. What if the circuit is locked using something like SFLL technique? Yeah, that, that is a, the point function technique uh, version of the obfuscation, uh, similar to the SAT attack. Uh, when we are talking about the point function technique, since it, they are increasing the number of iteration, SMT, does not provide any advantage. But as I said, for example, when we have compound logic locking, such as uh, SAR lock or anti sat compound with traditional, it is working, but uh, this one has nothing on SFL technique as well. Yeah, I think you need to look at the removal bypass uh, fall attack, those other attacks that are uh, proposed for the Yeah, point. and recently GNN unlock, I think the newest version of the neural network based attack on 
uh, SFLL technique. I think they are they, they it is proposed by the same team that produce that introduced S SFLL in the past. Yeah. I yes. Guess, uh, note that each one of these attacks has their own uh, strength and weaknesses. You have to understand what type of logic locking is applied, and then based on that, decide your attack vector. <laughs> very, very nice conclusion. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, with that said, we concluded the uh, the uh, webinar today. Sroop, do you have anything to add? Uh, maybe you can introduce in the next month's panel quickly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. First of all, um, thanks to everybody who are, who, who are attending um, this particular webinar today and thanks to the presenters. Um, I had to join a little bit late because I had a, an overlapping meeting, but I, I believe it went very well. I appreciate the enthusiasm from the audience. I think this is an, uh, this is an important exercise for all of us to do so that we can make not only our research visible, but also we can hear from the community to see what the needs are and how we can take into account those to improve our research. So that's that's really um, a collective exercise which we are doing here. So really appreciate that for, um, I mean, really appreciate the support from the presenters as well as from the attendees. Now, talking about the next event, we have a really big upcoming event that's on the 18th. That's a Monday, 11.30 Eastern time. We have the first panel, virtual panel. And if you go to CEDA Cat for Assurance uh, page or even the Cat for Assurance website, you will learn more about that. We'll send you uh, flyers on that event. This is a panel on challenges and solutions under zero trust model. It's probably one of the most important topic in hardware security today, where we assume that the foundry, some of the design facilities, and also the testing facilities are trusted. They are not only untrusted, the Department of Defense at the United States, they think they should put zero trust on them. Under that assumption, what are the challenges? Can the current security solutions work or there are requirements for uh, rethinking, significant rethinking to come up with solutions. So um, stay tuned, you'll, you'll learn more about that. We have a fantastic panel, which is composed of um, really strong representatives, distinguished panelists from industry and from government. And I would really appreciate if all of you can join that, but we'll, we'll reach out to you with more information. Okay, and uh, this is Avesta Sasan. I also wanted to, at the end, to thank uh, Yerjin and Suara Bunia for uh, hosting this event, moderating this event. This is a, a really great service to the community. It takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of time. So um, on behalf of the community, on behalf of myself and my students, we thank you. Really thank you for that. We really appreciate that. Yes. So with that said, uh, uh, we will conclude the uh, webinar today. Thanks. Thanks again for everyone to attend the meeting.